Hey y'all, it's Emily from Song of the Lark here, and I'm at my dining room table with a very special artifact that uh, you probably can't tell what it is because I'm zoomed in too much. Uh, but this is a book. It is a book of Minneapolis Symphony Orchestra programs from 1966 to 67. And as you can see here on my fingers, it's uh, quite a thick book. And this is a book that has a very storied history. Um, it actually belonged to Stan Scrivich. Um, who was, of course, the uh, music director of the Minneapolis Symphony, which later became the Minnesota Orchestra. And uh, he passed away recently, and there was a, uh, an estate sale. And uh, there were quite a few of these books that had vintage programs assembled and bound into them. And... Uh, they were being sold. The first day they were priced at $10, the second day they were priced at uh, $5, and the third day they were priced at $3.33 a piece, and that was when I jumped at them. Um, it, it was a really bittersweet experience going to that sale. Um, it felt both like a, a celebration of his life and uh, all of the accomplishments that uh, he accomplished here and uh, helped our orchestra achieve. Um, but on the other hand, uh, it's also a reminder that he's gone and uh, we miss him very, very much. So, you know, shout out to Stan. We love you. And uh, I'm always going to treasure. I think I ended up getting six books um, with different years of them. Uh, my friend Kristen picked them up for me. So um, shout out to Kristen, you're great. Thank you so much. So um, I thought that I would just, I don't know, make a series of videos kind of looking at these, um, or at least one, and then see what you guys think of it. And uh, I'll keep an eye on the timer here. I'm at 2 minutes and 10 seconds, and I'll try to keep them around 10 minutes. Um, and just kind of take a look at what, what concert life was like in 1966 to 67. Um, so yeah. Let's try to move forward past the advertisements. Well, the advertisements are very cool and part of the reason that I wanted this. This is cool. This is the board of directors in 1966. And, uh, you know, I didn't grow up in Minneapolis. A lot of you did, I know. And so for me, not a lot of these names have a lot of meaning, um, but you guys probably know who a lot of them are. And um, so I'm going to have to rely on your expertise. If you have anything to say about any of these people and their contributions to the orchestra, let me know. I'd love to hear any stories that you might have. Um, oh, we use some of the most advanced computers in the investment business. A wide assortment of other electronic gear. Electroscan and a stockmaster. 50,000 miles of private leased wire. Oh my god. I'm gonna go there for my stock advice because he's got a calculator, man. Good evening, concert goers. Another sold out Sunday series of 10 adventures and music programs. Um. I think those were held at Northrop, and if so, that's, you know, Northrop was a barn. It, it had, like, what, like, room for 4,600, 4,800 people, something like that. So, I mean, concerts sell out nowadays, too, but it's just important to keep in mind that Northrop was huge. I love, I love that Wisconsin in November is considered a major tour. <laughs> Uh, sorry for that rumbling noise, if you heard it, that's my cat running across the house, because that's what cats do. This is really interesting, the second paragraph from the end. All these activities will fill a busy 38-week session season for the orchestra, all a part of the Minnesota Orchestral Association's progressing plans for a year-round musical season providing regular annual employment for our musicians. That worked out. <laughs> Happily, that worked out. Oh, that is a brick of a car. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Your rear seat companions exit gracefully at curbside. I love it. The test drive you will not forget. So, uh, and this is interesting too. This is a listing of um, who was playing in the orchestra at this particular time. Um, again, I didn't grow up here. A lot of these names you guys probably are more familiar with than I am. Um, so as an outsider, really the first thing that comes to mind for me, um, just with my particular set of interests, is how few women are in the orchestra at this point. Um, there's still a few, um, including Cynthia Eddy Britt in a principal cello position. Uh, associate, associate principal, assistant principal. Um, so that's really interesting. Well, this is interesting. Under the bass, Clifford Johnson, piano tuner. Since he was like a bass player and a tuner, that's great. If that's if I'm interpreting that right. So, you know, hats off to those guys and ladies um, for creating the orchestra that we know and love. A busy summer season. Dude, your beard. Awesome. I'm not familiar with his career. Whoa, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with his career. George Troutvine? Um, I'll have to Google after I make this this video and put the phone down. Have a subscription debut on November 25th with violinist Isaac Stern. Well, if you're going to pick a guest artist to make your debut with, could do worse than Isaac Stern. The interesting music of the Baroque, especially recorded concert. Very cool. Playing some Baroque music. Whoa, remember those phones, guys? Like, wow. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of money sticking out of that phone. Um, this is interesting. Introducing Concertmaster. Perhaps the youngest Concertmaster of any major orchestra. We don't know for sure, because we don't have Google yet, but he might just well be the youngest Concertmaster of any major orchestra in the United States. I'm not familiar with his career either. I'll have to, lots of names in here to Google and to learn more about. I'm already at eight minutes, so I'm going to try to move forward a little bit faster so we can look at at least a couple programs. Uh, this, I found this to be, I was paging through this before I started this video, and uh, I found this program to be really interesting. Um, it looks like a season opener. The concert was Friday at 8.30 p.m., mid-October, which is late um, by modern standards, to have your season opener. Uh, we usually have ours in mid-September, or I guess usually mid-September now. Um, so we have Tchaikovsky 6 before intermission, and then a world premiere, it looks like, and then ending things with Ravel. But this is quite the meaty program here, and that must have been a real thrill to see. Um, I'll have to look up funeral music. I'm not familiar with that either. So again, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to Google. Um, so program notes. I'm not convinced that that's the best way to hold a baton. Um, come in and hear our beautiful furniture and talk to our limbless women, I guess. Sorry for any rumbling, that's my cat. So again, I'm not from Minneapolis, but come to 50th in France. That looks like, I bet these names are setting off nostalgia meters for somebody somewhere. Um, if you have any memories of any of these shops, let me know, I'm, I'm interested. Oh, I would like that. 
Um, well, I don't know that I want that, but I want the glamour of that. <laughs> oh, this is great. Again, greets at Symphony Going Friends. Found your home in the, in the symphony program. Oh, if your present two-story home is burdensome, you want a solid, close-in, one-story house with big rooms that will accommodate your furniture. Call us. 12 minutes of downtown. It's only 44.5, guys. I wonder what that is in modern. I have to convert that. Here's a program for uh, the funeral music. I'm going to keep going. Whoa, lady. Her legs, her toothpicks, and one of them disappeared. The 60s, man. I'm gonna go t toward one more. Love that car. It's 11, I'm at 11.15. I'll keep going until one more um, concert. This might end up being closer to a 15 minute video than a 10 minute. Do you guys know anything about this? A brief comment by the artist can sometimes be helpful for brief commentary on next week's concert. Listen to the Minneapolis Symphony preview featuring Stan. Huh. I, I wonder if any of those exist somewhere in some format. I, I hadn't heard of that. Um, a new note of enjoyment to an evening at the symphony. Park in a ramp, have dinner, get bus to the symphony at 8 o'clock p.m., and then return. It's a dollar charge. Very cool. Oh, wait. Oh, yes, this is what I thought it was. Smoking and use of cameras. It is requested by action of the Board of Regents that in Northrop Memorial Auditorium, smoking be confined to the outer lobby on the main floor, to the gallery lobbies, and to the lounge rooms. The use of cameras and tape recorders in the auditorium by members of the audience is prohibited. So no smoking in the auditorium, guys. Step a couple of feet outside into the lobby and uh, <laughs> music ponds. Step a few feet out in the lobby and smoke there. Okay. Oh, well, this is not what I thought it was going to be. That's cool. I'm looking for the next subscription concert so I can. Is that a picture of Stan? It must be. Hey, Jenny. Cat paws for you. Um, oh, opening dress rehearsal concert. Well, that's cool. And I think when they're playing Dvorak in the 60s, that the numbers are wrong, right? So symphony number two is actually what we know as the symphony number seven, right? Am I right on that? I'll have to Google that. Again, so many things to Google. Child Prodigy, Ruggiero Ricci. Yes, he was a great one. Hindemith and Paganini. That, that's a, a program you're not going to get nowadays. Oh, wow. Threnity for the Victims of Hiroshima. Wow. That is some... <laughs> It's heavy stuff, and it feels like it must have felt even closer um, back in 1966. This is an era that is not too far away from World War II. Mm. I don't know what this means. <laughs> I'll just move on from that. I don't know what that was. And, oh gosh, I'm getting close to it being 15 minutes. Do you want me to go, like, one more concert? I think I will. Okay, one more concert. I'm getting sucked into this book. Oh, 
Oh, on October 20th, the Minneapolis Symphony enters a new era, launching a new series of five Thursday evening concerts at 8 p.m. Realizing that no one concert night can serve the needs of everyone, and with the increasing demand for Friday night tickets, 96.5% of capacity last season, the symphony decided to mount the new Thursday series. Wow. You know, with Aaron Copeland inaugurating that. $8.50 for all five concerts. And the dress rehearsal concerts, that must have been like a more established thing than it is nowadays. That's, that's interesting. Oh, names. Oh, the Guarantee Fund. And again, these are probably names that you guys know a lot more about than I do. Um, I recognize some, um, but not as many as you probably do. So again, if you, if any of these names trigger anything, if maybe your family name is in here, I don't know. Um, if you have any good memories of these folks, let me know. I'd love to hear about them. Oh, a symphony season ticket drive. Well, this is awesome. The following workers have sold over a thousand dollars worth of new season tickets for this year. <laughs> let's re let's let's make this happen again. I love this. I could help sell some season tickets. I can't give like a thousand dollars, but I might be able to, you know, like go up to people on the street and tell them to subscribe and sell them and just go around town being obnoxious. I like this idea. Let's 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 bring that back. Oh, we have so many children, but we do know what to do. Seventy thousand kids. Communities as far away as Hastings. Yes, because Hastings is just so far away. Um So many children, the more there are, the better we like it. I'll say. Wamzo. There's magic in the air at the opening concert. And, you know, as different as so many things are, that's, that's one of the things that stays the same and has been the same for a hundred odd years. The magic in the air at the opening concert. Hmm. Any woman may join WAMZO at any time of the year. Not only will she enjoy the many social events, but she can exercise her talents in scores of interesting projects. Lots of interesting projects. This is like, this is like prime Betty Draper stuff here. Love it. Okay, I'm trying to get to like the next, here we go, the next concert. Whoa, going my way, question mark? Is this like a phrase aside from the Twilight Zone episode that's creepy as crap? I was going to say a bad word, but you guys know what I mean. Really? Again, another thing to Google. Going my way? I don't, I don't really want to get in a car with you. Uh, the board. Let's get to the, pro the brick car again. A lot of this is a posh button telephone. <laughs> you simply put the button button. <laughs> I found this so hilarious I couldn't speak. You simply push the buttons in sequence. Each button sounds a pleasant musical tone. It's twice as fast as regular dialing. Wow. Call the Joneses and tell them, apostrophe, tell them you were just trying out your new phone. The one with the buttons instead of the dials. Oh my god, that's great. Uh, Arichi biography. Um, okay, so let's... 
Well, I guess it's kind of the same thing as the preview that we saw, but this is interesting. This is one of those concerts that um, that had two performances. Not all of them did. There were a lot that were on Friday and not Thursday, so this is interesting in that it's one of the shows that was performed twice. Um, first performance at these concerts. So when they say that, See, I thought the Ludosovsky back there was like a world premiere, but maybe they mean by the asterisk that it's like the Minneapolis Symphony's first time playing these pieces because I hate to break it to you, but uh, Paganini's second concerto was not premiered in Minneapolis by Ruggiero Ricci. Really, really interesting. The meaty stuff going on here with the Hindemith. Oh, you look happy. So what year was the Hindemith? I don't know enough about Hindemith, and you'd think I would, given the instrument that I play. A virtuoso violist, does such a thing exist? Sarcasm, by the way, guys. What, what's more like toothpick legs? Melodious is this marvelously beautiful dress plus jacket ensemble. I don't know, guys. I mean, this this looks painful. Um, gosh, I'm getting to 21, almost 22 minutes here. Um, so I need to stop, like... Oops. <laughs> that looks funny. I need to, like, stop obsessively um, paging. Uh, through this program. If you guys found this interesting, just let me know and uh, we can come back to um, Stan's amazing book and uh, and look at what was happening in other years as well. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that some of you guys found this interesting. Um, I know I did and I'm going to spend many happy hours paging through this thing and, uh, and being grateful for the uh, the legacy that we've been left. Um, I'll catch you guys later and uh, hope you have a great day and see you at the next Minnesota Orchestra concert. Bye-bye.